Doug List, the main theme today, or should I say last Friday, was diminished chords that are actually functioning as substitutes for dominance. So you can prove this to yourself by playing a B major triad here. Okay, D sharp, F sharp, and B. Make it minor, D natural, and then make it diminished by flattening the five. Now you have a B diminished, but if you just put the G root with it, suddenly you notice you have a G7. So we can always extract this diminished chord from this uh, seventh chord. And if I played the G up here, the same logic would apply, but my shape looks different on the next string group. That's 12, 10, 12, based on this G7 versus this one. So the consequence is you can play a nice little blues um, by using this chord in conjunction with the, the seventh chord like this. That's a C7 that goes C, E, B flat. No fifth. So you get, you know, one, four, one. And you can chromaticize these. Four. Five will just be the neighbor to four. And now switch it up and make the um, the um, the root position G your one. So one. Okay, so here's no sorry G seven. And now your C seven's here. Now it's the diminished chord. I'm gonna fast forward here. Five chord D seven. You get the drift. It's fun to play it with just the diminished chords. Um, and then it's fun to put it onto the other string group. So if we did the same thing, we could start with this B diminished. Now your C is like this 10, 9, 11, C, E, B flat. So 1. Seven. And similarly, it's fun to do the whole one with diminished chords. Fast forward to five. So, and then the further consequence of that is that bigger types of diminished chords if you think about them as seventh chords, are really adding ninths. So a fully diminished seventh would add a flat nine to the seventh chord. So that gives it that dark, sinister five chord sound. And a half diminished adds a natural ninth, which is a sweeter, jazzy sound. So if I'm in E major, for instance, a D sharp um, half diminished is adding a ninth to what would be a B root here. So if you could even sing the B root. This would add a flat nine and would typically resolve to minor. And as you and I both like, a minor resolving to a major. These are completely interchangeable to the composer's ear. Point is that we think about them as diminished chords from their respective root up, but they really are functioning as dominant chords with a root that's not present. And so that additional note, which we'd call a seven, a flat seven or a double flat seven, is effectively a ninth or a flat ninth, a sinister or a sweet sounding dominant chord. Um, the other things we talked about briefly were um, some of these kind of banjo row pull offs on E. So take your um, E major scale in, um, in six and just do uh, pick two, three. So three, two, one. Feel. So you get that kind of washy open sound with Travis, not Travis, with um, hybrid picking. And then you can do the pull off on the top to get a more kind of lush sound like this. What would we do? I can't remember the rhythms that we were doing. Something like this. But you're just adding that high tonic in there. Start with the high note, we did do that.
make some nice textures, but it does take practice, obviously. And then we talked about doing fast stuff with OpenG a la Albert Lee, or Alvin Lee, your guy. Um, and we just noticed that the unisons are good for that. Because you get that half step to the one, which is twangy, and then the open note below it. So try going down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. Do that with each of your unisons first. A. about playing a G scale on the G string and going. So it's a, a 16th note run, but when you do the pull off you get a break. So it's down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. When I was doing a major pentatonic, you do minor. major blues. And what makes this a bigger challenge, as you know, is adding two strings. So now, try playing the scale and then going, playing three Ds afterwards, so you're pedaling the fifth, so it's... This is harder, but it's good for your right hand. Invert it by putting the G scale on the D string starting here, and now you're pedaling the open G. So you're going down, up, down, up, three notes on the open G. Anyways, you can go a lot of places with that, but we did cover that general vibe, and I'm looking at my notes. That's it. Those are the main takeaways. Have fun, brother.